Welcome back, everybody. Hey, what did one snowman say to the other? Smells like carrots. <laughs> Classic. In this next session, we are going to learn how to create and tell our very own holiday jokes. We will learn the science of what makes something funny, how to craft jokes out of literally anything, and how to perform them like a professional so you'll have everyone in stitches this holiday season. Please join me in welcoming to our stage, Alex Ranahan. Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy holidays and a Merry Christmas one and all. Beth, thanks so much for bringing me on. And now it's time to spread the Christmas cheer. So about when a lot of you are thinking, well, hang on a minute. How do I be, you know, ho, ho, hope full instead of ho, ho, hope less. And so that's what my job is today. My job is to give you simple and effective and instant tools to put into your inventory to make you make people laugh like Santa with his bolt, his when he shakes his bay like a bowl full of jelly. And so what I'm going to do is for the next 20 minutes, we're going to go on a whirlwind tour of how to make people laugh. And the very first thing I want to talk to you about is the psychology of comedy. So ooh, that's a big word, isn't it? What psychology? No, comedy. Well, it makes me laugh. So this is what I want you to know. We have three different types of laughs. OK, and I don't mean ho, 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 ho. What I mean is we've got three. The first one is the is the the head laugh. Now, the head laugh is when we laugh because something's witty. OK, like, for example, if I said to you, hey, why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine, you go, oh, OK, <laughs> then that would be a witty joke. OK, then the second thing is when we laugh from uh, from our bellies. Now, that's actually a survival mechanism. Laughter is a survival mechanism because your brain short circuits. But I'm going to be telling you about that very quickly. So very soon. So, in fact, oh, thank you very much, Mark. So when we laugh from our bellies, what that is, is that is uh, our body going, oh, something different. Like, for example, Steve Martin. He would say, for example, he'd come on stage and his opening joke would be, I was once a, a poor black child. Well, we go, huh? What? Because he's white. So immediately we go, oh, OK. So your brain snaps into something different. And then we've got a third one, which I hope you're not doing with me, which is the polite laugh. When someone goes, hey, <laughs> what do you get if you cross a vampire and the snowman? Frostbite. And you go, <laughs> yes, that's right. So Mark's put on the screen here for me. Thank you very much, Mark. Mark has put uh, the science of comedy. So this is how your brain snaps into action. So imagine that we've got two lines, OK? So we've got two lines here. The first one is your logic, OK, along the bottom. And so that's the things that the brain knows. And then imagine that we've got on an angle, quite obtuse, excuse the pun, it, we've got ourselves incongruity. And in layman's terms, although I don't know who layman is, but hey, I took his terms. What layman's terms means is that your brain figures out that something is different from what you've said and the rules of what you normally say. And so the joke in the middle bridges that gap. So if we take why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. The reason that works is the logic is we know that, the, that in the order of numbers, it goes six, seven, eight, nine. OK. However, the incongruity is how can a number eat another number? That doesn't make sense. Ah, wait a minute. So we've got the logic of numbers in, a, in an order. We've got the incongruity that you, a number can't eat itself. Bingo! There we go. We bridge the gap and your brain fires into action. And that is where the laughter comes from. So if I were to give you uh, another example of that one, for example. So if someone said to me, hey, are you funny? What do you mean am I funny? Well, you're crackers. <laughs> hey, there we go. Because that would be a Christmas cracker joke. Because your brain, what the brain does is it uses this formula. You might want to jot this down. I haven't got on a slide, but here it is for you. What we have is we have... The setup of a joke plus the punchline is divided by the rules. So what that means is that we hear the joke. So we, we, what we do is we hear the joke being set up. We hear the punchline, but the laughter comes when we realize what the rules were of the joke because we have the logic and the incongruity coming together. She so go, Alex, what are you on about? That's too much. I just want you to make me funny, man. Well, hey, I'm sorry if I'm being a little bit frosty. But hey, I don't want to be a snowflake. Let's go on to the next slide, please, Mark. So this is what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you to break up jokes. And so what we do when we break up jokes is, first of all, we want to look up, can we break up the words and the meanings? So in fact, I've got a, I've got a joke for you right here. Now, who is Santa's favorite singer? 
Elvis Presley. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, now the reason that works is because we've broken up Elvis Presley into Elvis Presley. We've broken it up. And in fact, it even sounds alike. So we're able to, to put those two together because we have the rules from the setup. Our brain goes, hang on a minute, Elvis sounds like Elvis, and therefore it adds the two together. So what if you try to replace something when we tell a joke? So for example, let me give you another one that I've got here. So what is a dog's favorite Christmas song? Bark, the herald angels sing. And so what we've done is we've replaced hark with bark, which means that the brain goes, hang on a minute, that sounds the same, but dogs can't sing, ha ha. Trust me, it's not as complicated as I'm making it. I'm going to make it really simple now. So that's what, how a pun works. So what we want to do is we want to figure out, can we pun part of it or half of it? So for example, what do you call a duck at Christmas? A Christmas quacker. So you see, all of this makes sense. It doesn't have to be a great joke, but your brain puts things together. Now, you can also take jokes out of context, for example, and that is when we get a witty joke because your brain goes, actually, that was pretty clever. I want to give you two examples of that. So, for example, one of them, what happened to the man who stole an advent calendar? He got 25 days. Hey, because you see the candle has 25 days, but at the same time, so does a jail sentence. Ooh. And one more for you, one more for you, if you really want to play it cool. Excuse the pun, I'm just full of them, <laughs> full of something. Here we go. So here we go, everybody. Now, what did Adam say to Eve? Uh, what did Adam say the day before Christmas? <gasps> it's Christmas Eve. Aha! So what you're doing is you're taking things out of context and putting it together. You can make it, does it sound alike? You can make it, uh, are there any cliches? Why are there so many cliches around bad jokes and puns? Because they're simple and they're obvious, even though your brain's doing all of that work. Now, let's get to the magic. So, Mark, can we go to the next slide, please? So... Here's something that you can take away and put in your pocket. Uh, pocket. Uh, pocket. Enough science. So it's very simple. What you do is you brainstorm. So what you do is you take two subjects. Let's take two Christmas subjects. Like, for example, uh, Santa and Christmas trees. Okay, then what you do around that, you do a mind map or you do a brainstorm. Just anything that comes into your head. Like, for example, if I were to brainstorm, uh, brainstorm pets and carols, I would have dogs, uh, hark the herald angels sing. Hey, hang on a minute. Put that together, okay? So what you do is with that brainstorm, you're just trying to match anything together and see what comes out. It's it's like just getting jokes and going, here, on a page. Uh, is any of this funny? It's like, for example, if uh, if you were to put maths, okay? If you were to put maths and gardening together, you go, what on earth has maths and gardening got together? Then, you, then I'd say, well, pfft. You think accounting's fun, but you've never seen a square root, you know? So you see, what you can do is you can put things together and your brain will fire it up. As long as there is a similarity, it doesn't even have to be the cleverest thing. And so I'm going to break this down even more for you. Hang fire, everybody. So what we've got is we've got that main, we've got our main subjects, okay? We've got things around it. Now, I want to give you an example of how this works for your Christmas cracker. Now, I want to give you two. First of all, you know we had cracker, sounds like quacker. Well, that would be what would happen if you put a duck and Christmas together. I'd go, okay, uh, duck. What about duck? Well, it's, fl it's uh, furry. It's got a bill. Hey, I could use a bill. That'd be a great money joke there, you see, because it's got a double meaning. In fact, here's another example. What's an elf's favorite music? Rap. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because you see how it works? You can just riff as soon as you know that brainstorm. And I'm going to give you another one. So let's take uh, Christmas, okay? So when I have Christmas, I want to have two together. I'm going to have Santa, and I'm going to have, off the top of my head, Christmas trees, okay? So let's think. Uh, Santa, what, uh, what can I do with Santa? Well, he's a jolly man, isn't he? He's rather plump, uh, you know? Um, you know, he's uh, he's very red. Already I can think of jokes, you know, seeing red or maybe the side of the size of his boat straps. But how can I put that together with a Christmas tree? Well, what types of Christmas trees are there? What well, trees? There's, there's cedars. There's uh, there's pine. What does pine sound like? Fine. What does Santa say when he saw his Christmas tree? Ooh, very pine. You see, it's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be a great joke because as long as it sounds the same, we can do that. Now, I'm going to teach you how to deliver these jokes. Mark, if we could have the next slide, please. So now that, we've, now that I've taught you how to do the large joke collider, it's time to get to the nitty gritty. Now, we know that jokes can sound, that you can make a pun out of things that sound the same. So, for example, if I said, hey, who hides in the bakery at Christmas? 
a mince pie. That's all right. I do my own music too, folks. So because mince pie, when you break it down, mince pie. So all we're doing is we're being Shakespeare here. You know, we're living the dream, folks. We're just breaking down how the word sounds. And let's take another one. What says, oh, oh, oh. Santa walking backwards because your brain goes, hang on a minute, ho, 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 oh, 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 it mirrors it. So your brain's really clever. All you have to do is trip your brain very slightly. And that's how jokes are formed. You know, it's like when if you've ever been to a wedding and someone goes, oh, I want to raise a toast. And then they get a bit of that old manky bread, <laughs> you know, because that's a visual gag. I mean, your brain goes, ah, oh, that's the same as that. So you see, so let's get to what a bad joke is. If you thought these were bad, it's going to get worse. So you'll notice that with a mince pie, it works because of the sound of the words. But if I were to do who hides in a bakery at Christmas? Thieves. Then that's not funny, is it? Although that is known as a obvious joke, a negative joke, because we're stating the obvious. But your brain goes, of course thieves yeah it's not funny or if we are to go well what if we take this too far who what says oh 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 well santa doing the moonwalk baby Woo! you know well hang on a minute first of all what's that got to do with santa our brain doesn't put the two together and here's another thing i want to teach you all when you deliver your jokes we want to get to the point and what i mean by that is there is a rhythm to telling jokes because you know i said earlier that the setup plus the punch, uh, punch the punch, yeah. set up plus the punchline divided by the rules makes a joke. Basically, going back to Lehman, and he was a very funny man, we don't want, even though I'm over, uh, uh, overthinking this now, we want it to just come off the tongue. And when it goes into a pattern, it works. Like, who hides in the bakery at Christmas? That would be much better than, so if I were to tell you that there are people hiding in the bakery this year at Christmas, who do you think they'd be? This isn't a quiz. You know, your brain's not geared for that. We want it to be short and sweet. Who hides in a bakery at Christmas? A mint spy. Don't give them time to think. That's the secret, everybody. All right. Now, also, when I said about what says, oh, 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 Santa walking backwards, we want to get to the point because too much information. You Remember, we've got logic and incongruity. Well, if we're going too far on that logic side, oh, my goodness, I'm going to lay the lean off my screen. You see, we're just taking it too far. We really want to cut to the chase. And so now I'm going to cut to the chase and show you the next slide. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to show you something that's pretty radical. Alrighty. So now that I've taught you how to break jokes down, we've also sh I've shown you how to create a mind map. I've even shown you how to deliver it by reducing that rhythm. We're going to show you a demonstration here. So what does Santa say when he saw his Christmas tree? Very pine. Can we reduce that? Let's get to it even, even better. Okay. It would, we could make it like, so if we could, instead of what did Santa say when he saw his Christmas tree? It would be like, what does Santa say to the Christmas tree? Ooh, very pine. You see how much more effective that is? Because we've condensed it. We haven't given the brain time to think. It has to be that survival mechanism. Okay, now having a look at that as well. So you see a brainstormed a couple of things there. So for example, you know, um, when you use the, the mind maps, it does all it has to be is tentative links. Try to connect everything. So let's look at my mind map right over there, okay? So for example, we've got carols. So when we've written things out like Silent Night, how can we make a joke out of that? Well, what if we took Silent Night quite literally, okay? So for example, you could walk into a room of people and you could go, hey, let me sing you, what, what do you think my favorite carol is? It's Silent Night. Do you know what? Let me sing it for you. You see, so your brain still goes, oh gosh. So you don't have to do anything that's too witty. All you have to do is do something that doesn't quite add up, but enough that people will get. It's like pulling a cracker. We know it's going to go like that. We, we, we're not expecting it to go bang, oh my arms, you know? So, and, and again, just then you didn't see that coming. It's there to be able to put you into a different direction. So to summarize all of this, we are creating expectation and then thwarting it. We're making people think we're going one way when we take them another. So now that I've taught you how to break things down to make puns, I've taught you how to be able to make a mind map of, map of jokes so you can do anything, whether it's a topical joke from the newspaper, whether it's a corporate speech, whether it's a cracker joke, maybe you just want to be able to walk in with that oof 
ugly Christmas sweater, announce that you are arriving and put in that bad joke to get that mood. You know how to do it. You know how to reduce the patter down so that things go along. You know, like Shakespeare, da -da, da -da, da -da. we don't want to make the joke too long. Now we come to the delivery. Now, the delivery is affected by your relationship with people. So, for example, let's be real here. We're in the office and one of our friends cracks a joke. You're probably going to laugh because you really like them. But that one sourpuss comes into the office and they, they, might, they might say the same joke and people might be like, mm. your relationship with people affects how the joke comes across. You're going to treat things differently if you're over Zoom. There is a psychological barrier between you and the participants. You have to be a bit higher to get over that. Okay. Or it could be that you're in a room full of people you don't know. So you've got to find a way to break the ice. So using something that everyone's got in common might work. You know, like, for example, hey, what did Santa do when he went speed dating? He pulled a cracker. <laughs> you see? And you know what? If they don't laugh, just just go oh, because, well, I mean, they'll be laughing at something. It might not be the joke, though. OK. And so I want to give you one more thing when it comes to delivering that joke. So we talked about the relationships as well with people, because, you know, your granny's going to laugh a lot differently than someone down the street. But that's why they call it reading the room, because you want to create a rapport with people. You want to create a relationship with people and then they're going to be more receptive to your joke. Or or maybe you can bribe them with a little bit of the Christmas spirit. Brandy works. OK. <laughs> All right. Don't want to take the biscuit or, or take the pudding, in fact. So I'm going to leave you with one last thing. We've gone through the science. We've gone through the psychology. We've gone through the rhythms. We've gone down to all of this. Let's condense it into what happens when we write that joke. We need to deliver it with gusto. Now, there are some people that deliver a joke really, really flat. In fact, let me give you an example. What did the snowflake say to the fallen leaf? Oh, you are so last season. OK, so you could be quite dry or you could be really quite over the top. Like, hey, what do you call an old snowman? Water. Aha. <laughs> yes, that's right. Or so you've got the high energy. You've got the dry energy or you've got the sneaky joke. It's all about the timing. It's all about the suspense. It's all about the build up as you come to deliver that crucial, funny, amazing joke. My granddad wrestled a reindeer in his 90s. That's pretty old for a reindeer. Take him a different way, folks. Get him to fill in that gap. And on that note, everybody, I want to thank you so much. And I want to bring you to one more thing before I hand over to Beth, because we've started a little bit late here. So I just want to give you a little bit more information just to deliver on, on things. Now that we know how to deliver the joke, now we know how to write the joke, now we know how to break the joke down. It all sounds like a lot, doesn't it? It sounds like, whoa, this is meant to be a fun activity. Hey, come on, give, give me something I can use. Don't give me something that's going to make me think. Then this is the secret, okay? This is the secret. All you have to do is just look around. Just look around at different things that you see at different posters, different pictures, and just think to yourself, what doesn't quite add up about that? That's the secret. Like, for example, if you were to say, like, if, like let's take, a, you take a snowman, for example. Okay, so a snowman, what can we brainstorm out of a snowman? Well, he's cold. He's cold as ice, yeah. He's frosty. That's why you call him Frosty the Snowman, you know? So you, go, you look at that and you go, okay, so he's cold, he's frosty, he's ice, okay. Hang on a minute. And then what you could do is like, for example, if you ever saw an advert with a snowman, they might play ice, ice baby because there's connotations, you see. Or if you were to look around and, you know, you would you to see the nativity. OK, Mary, Joseph, Mary. Hang on. Mary. That's also that also has other other meanings to be Mary. You know, so you can make a joke at like that. You can just all it has to be is anything that links with what you are thinking about. OK, so I want to bring you back to some of the jokes that I've got here as well. OK, now, the reason why I want to tell you these is because you'll see what I'm trying to illustrate. Let's take a snowman, for example. So you've got a snowman. He's an icy figure, yet he has a carrot in his nose. Now, that even that even means that he's got <laughs> that he really likes the vegetables. It even means that he really can't smell and therefore he's really going for it or it could mean that something's not quite adding up. And when it doesn't add up, that's where you jump in. 
So check this one out. What did the snowman say to the aggressive carrot? Get out of my face. You see what we've done there? We've taken something literal. It doesn't quite add up. And we put the joke in there. Anything that doesn't quite add up is brilliant for you to make a joke out of. It'd be the same as if, let's say, someone in the workplace was called Carol and she started singing. I mean, mic drop right there. And so, everybody, I want to thank you so much for listening to me teach you about jokes. I really want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to, for you to be able to make someone have a really special holiday this year. And we've gone from being ho ho hopeless to ho ho hopeful. And I ho ho hope that you've had an amazing time listening to me so you can bring some holiday cheer this season. I want to thank Anne Marie for bringing me in so much. My goodness, it's like an acceptance speech, isn't it? Uh, and also, I really want to thank Beth for all of the work she's been doing during this conference and for bringing me on. So thank you very much to Beth. <laughs> well, thank you, Alex. I will say that I'm sitting here and my cheeks kind of hurt. I can't be the only one who smiling for 20 minutes is like a bit exhausting for my face. Uh, that was so much fun. Thank you very much for, for joining us and for teaching us how to be funny. Ah, uh, well, thank you very much. It's uh, it's no laughing matter, but I'm hoping that you'll all be making making people a bit more cheerful this holiday season. Thank you very much. Well, folks, with that, we have come to the end of another whirlwind CMX winter soiree. Before we go, please join me in giving the biggest CMX emoji applause to Anne-Marie Pollocky Dinkle, who is our mastermind event manager at CMX. She has so much fun planning these events for all of you, and it shows the activities, the organization, the agenda. It's all just so intentional and thought out, and I'm so proud to be a part of her team. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Huge thank you as well to Mark, who is our stage manager and wizard behind the scenes. You always make me look so good, even when nobody can hear me. Thank you. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the winner of our CMX Academy giveaway. You have been posting your selfies on social media. We've loved seeing them. Thank you, Snapbar, for such a wonderful photo booth this year. It's been so fun to see the pictures. We've had incredible engagement on social media, so thank you, everyone, who's tagged us. But of course, we can only have one winner. This person is going to win a free CMX Academy course, the C2C Event Program Playbook, which is, of course, all about building a community-led events program. So please join me in congratulating Twitter username at Q Jackson SS rocks. <laughs> I love your Twitter username. Um, I don't know your real name, but thank you so much for all of your fun engagement. This wonderful for the last few hours on Twitter, we are going to be sending you a direct message with the instructions for how you can access your free CMX Academy course worth 499 US dollars. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Even though our event is ending, the conversation continues. Join the CMX community at the link above where it says community. I can't wait to see you in there. Whatever holiday you celebrate, thank you for celebrating the power of community with us today. We'll see you next time. <laughs>